mine. The honor is mine and the pleasure is mine to welcome a very distinguished personality. She's an HR specialist, um, done over 20 years of international experience, doing work in many different countries across the globe. And she comes on this show with a rich experience, a psychosocial aspect, and uh, for holistic mental health, you can be rest assured. When it comes to temperament analysis, you can be rest assured. She will deliver and give you a profile that you'll never forget. I've had that privilege, and so I can speak to that for you. And tonight, we are privileged to have a dame also in our midst. And um, she's the one and only Dr. Mary Anane Mensan, Mrs. Doc, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We've been looking forward to tonight for a period of time now. And we are privileged that it is happening finally. Uh, we thank God that today has come. <laughs> we thank God. And, and I, I believe that for the rest of you, your lives are going to be blessed. This woman is going to bless your lives tonight. Doc, normally we will start with you telling us about yourself, your background, your childhood, how many uh, children uh, you, were you and, and how many uh, family members do you have? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Um, anything that you can share about yourself that we can learn from? Okay. Thank you very much. Good evening to all our viewers. And it's a pleasure to connect with you tonight. Yeah, by way of background, um, I was born of parents who both came from the Volta region, Pandu district to be precise. But I was born in Accra. My first few days were in Okaishi. And then later on, uh, and the son as an infant, we moved to Adabraka. My dad, was a, a timber contractor, the late David Vukokwashi. He died about uh, 31 years ago. My mom is still alive. She's Elena Makwashi. And so the interesting thing is that my dad was widowed for some years before he married my mom, a young lady. So I was born into a family where I, I already had elder siblings and I was the first of that second marriage of my dad because he had lost his, uh, his otherwise previously and so I was one of the children of his old age and so that tells you that when I came in from my mom's side I was the first one but there were others that we met so it was like having aunties and uncles as your brothers and sisters. And it was quite interesting because that also gave me a bit of a start in life. Uh, I think I picked my reading habits from there because I remember picking up the books of my older siblings, even as a, a child of class two, class three, and teaching myself to read. So that had a lot of impact on me. And as I said, um, when we moved to Adabraka, I started school from nursery at uh, Aditrum. I think it's a preparatory school. And surprisingly, the school is still there. I was in nursery there. And then I started class one there. Uh, it had a Methodist background. And my father, especially being the staunch Catholic that he was, insisted that I go to a Catholic school. So I was moved from Aditrum after my nursery and class one, I was moved to St. Joseph's school. And in St. Joseph's, 
they said I was too small to go to class two. So I had to go to class one again because I wasn't six years at the time. So I, I got to go to class one again. And so I started all over from St. Joseph's all the way to class four. And then my dad decided that I needed a bit of toughening. So I was sent off to a Catholic boarding school in Achimswedru called uh, St. Agathe's Girls School. So I was there till Form 1 when I came back to uh, Accra. So that is more like my, uh, my childhood. You know, being in Catholic schools, a Catholic home, and I must say, most of what I became in terms of my commitment to the Catholic Church uh, had to do with my being at Akin Swedru, because it was a Catholic boarding school run by the HDR sisters, who were our mothers, our mentors, our teachers, and everything. Even though we had some lay people, but in the boarding house, it was mostly them. And so it was all about prayer at the time that you need to pray, uh, I remember us praying the Angelus, having to go for benediction almost every Sunday evening, sometimes morning mass before you came back to school and all that. So that's a bit about my childhood. Maybe as we go along, uh, some other aspects may come in, but uh, I'm a thoroughbred Accra uh, person because I was born and bred in Accra. And I've been in Accra for most of my life. Awesome. Thank you very much. We are grateful to you for sharing um, your childhood with us. It's interesting. I'm learning some things I didn't know. <laughs> uh, some things I didn't know. I'm getting to hear them for the very first time. So how many siblings in all? Um, there were four of them before okay. I came along. There were four of them before I came along. And uh, no, there were five actually, two ladies and three gentlemen. And so I was a third lady. And then the one after me is also female. And the last is a male. Mm -hmm. uh, who is also a, a big man now. Yeah, so three from my mom's side. And currently, for the senior ones, uh, there's only one surviving. Mm -hmm. uh, we met all of them. And just uh, last year, yeah, last year, we lost the the fourth one, they, somehow they went in succession. You know, after the old man died 31 years ago, then we all stayed together for about 15, 20 years. And then they also started passing on. And so the last one of that batch is the one who is still alive now. So I have uh, that older brother alive and then uh, the younger ones. And your mom is still alive. Yeah, my mom is still alive. We thank God for her life. So, mommy, after St. Agathe's, um, you did up to Form 1. And then? Then I came back to Accra, precisely to another Catholic school, St. Mary's Girls Secondary School at the time. Mm. Uh, now it's senior high school. And so I, I came into St. Mary's and uh, over there to, there were things that shaped my life. But from St. Mary's, I did up to five years, that is up to form five. And like I said, certain things shaped my life because when I came to form one, 
my old man got very sick mm. and uh, he had to go away from home. He was actually on admission at college. And then there were too many visitors at the time. We didn't, he had a, a cardiac problem. We didn't even have the cardio center at the time because this was in the 70s. And so he was taken to, he was taken to Margaret Marquardt Hospital, which meant that he was away for some time, for more than six months. And my old lady also had to go. And so right from there, I had to start um, looking after my younger siblings, because like I said, the, the other ones were already old. They were married. They had their own families. So they'll come in and take care of us from time to time. But most of the time, it was my siblings and I. And so because of that, I took a decision. I, young as I was, I told myself, I think I was 14 at the time. I told myself that uh, if the old man should pass on, how was I going to, you know, uh, what was I going to do? Because all my life, he had been the one to look up to for everything. And so right there, I took a decision. I said I needed to complete Form 5 very early, try and get a, a profession. So in case the old man was no more, I could look after my siblings. And because of that, I decided not to fail a SIS form card because I didn't want to be tempted since I was bent on getting a profession as early as possible. And so from St. Mary's, I went to another Catholic school, Holy Child College of Education, where I was trained in uh, food and nutrition education and uh, home economics. And so if you are wondering why my being particular about food and all that came from, that's where it came from. And so for three years, I was trained in food and nutrition education. And from there, I started work. So by age 21, I had already started work as a, a teacher in home economics. And I actually uh, set up the first home economics uh, department at Sacred Heart School in Debbie Avenue. Young as I was, I was a pioneer home economics teacher uh, there for the junior secondary school at the time. And then shortly after that, I mean, when we got married in uh, 1984, my husband mm -hmm. was in Niger at the time. And so I had to join him there after teaching about uh, three years. I had to join my husband in the Republic of Niger. So still quite young, I joined him in the Republic of Niger where I taught English language in a secondary school and added aspects of home economics in the French speaking country. So we lived outside Ghana in Niger for four years. So I came home in 1988 to visit my parents and I realized that uh, the old man didn't look too good. And so when I went back, I told my husband that we needed to come back home because of the way I saw the old man. So we came back in 1989 and by the grace of God, I was able to devote the next two years in helping my mom to take care of him. And so he passed on in 1991 in April, 1991. So from there, then I decided to go and do administration. And 
I went to this uh, manifold uh, college to do bilingual administration because by then I had become interested in French as a language, even though I had done some course in Alliance Francaise uh, before going to Niger. My being in Niger for four years actually exposed me a lot to the French language. So I came to do the bilingual administration after the old man passed on. And uh, from there, I, I switched from teaching to work in some consultancy firms. Uh, the first consultancy firm, I, it was more of a, a management consultancy firm. So I had a stint there. And then from there, I moved to another one uh, at Abekan, uh, Integrated Investments, where I was executive assistant to the head consultant. And he had a schedule that left me taking care of affairs most of them. And then I, I think what brought me into the uh, international organization fold was when I left that place, I worked on a project. Uh, the project was run by the Ghana Education Service, but it was funded by the United Nations uh, Fund for Population Activities, UNFP. And so I was there for some time I got to work with the national coordinator uh, and it had to do with an in-school population project. So I was on that project for, I think a couple of years. And then from there, I moved into the international organization. And so that's how come I migrated uh, from the classroom in both Ghana and outside, coming back and then finding my way in the private sector, and finally into an international uh, organization, which broadened my scope. From there, I went to Gimpa. I wanted to continue uh, my studies in administration. So I went all the way to do a postgraduate in a business administration, and that was where I did the, I majored in HR management. And so that was how come I got into HR. And from there, it, in fact, I've been a perpetual student because I still learn. Yes. So from there, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was working and so I've been mean, trying to move towards a certain direction. And so from HR, a few years later, I got into counseling and I was fascinated by the things I started learning. So the, the counseling actually had to do with uh, what the, the church, the Catholic church puts together for marriage counselors. So we're at and so on. And then the late Mr. Havo, I think we lost him about two years ago just approached me and said, I believe it will be good for you to become a, a professional counselor. So why don't you take that up and get really educated and become a professional counselor because the church needs it. And so I asked, where can I get that? So he connected me to Professor Oiniba Donyu and then I went in there and I had to start from certificate level. And I, I thought it was just something I was doing to end there because even the certificate level was something. After that, Prof, prof pushed me to go through the diploma. When I thought I was done, he was like, oh, when are you going to do uh, your first degree and master's in council. So with his push, 
I did that as well. And when I thought I was done, he kept asking me, when are you going to do your PhD? So one fine day, I just called him and said, how long will it take me uh, if I want to do my PhD very quickly? How long is it going to take me to do that? Then he was like, okay, knowing you, I know you can do it, you can do it in three years. And so I was like, okay. Then we talked about how much it was going to cost and all that. And he said, he said that you could, I mean, do that and just uh, maybe pay about half a start because I know you can do it in three years. And so that was it. And uh, that's how I, I went through my PhD, all at the International Theological Seminary in Bradenton, Florida. And so that has been the main part of my journey. Alongside, I have continued to learn, like I said, just as I was finishing my PhD, I got interested in coaching as well and joined the John C. Maxwell group of uh, coaches, speakers and trainers, you know. So before I had my, my, my legs out of uh, my studies for PhD, I was already into studying for coaching. And so right after my graduation, I was my way, I was my way to the US for the international certification as a John Maxwell team coach. And so that has been my journey alongside other uh, things that I've been learning. I learned and I'm still learning. So that has been my journey in terms of education. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting. Every, I believe that every one of us needs uh, a certain Mr. Abo in our lives and then a certain Paul Donu in our lives to, to really push us. Um, because this counseling exactly. aspect and the, and the coaching aspect, I believe these were very, very instrumental individuals uh, on that uh, journey and that aspect of your life. We thank God for their lives. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But now I, I can I can see a lot of people on with us. Some may be counselors, some may be students of yours at one place or another. Some may have experience. You train them <laughs> in different sessions all over the place. And uh, tonight we we get the opportunity to learn from you at first hand um, what the journey has been for you. And as I, as I look at the list of places and the learnings that you have done, that's interesting. All the way from Eddie Trone to John Maxwell certification, it's a whole long journey. 